There are very few games that can compete with the monster design pedigree set by the Resident Evil franchise. Whether the game is good or bad, they still manage to create some very inspired and terrifying creatures. So, here's what I've chosen as my top 10 scariest Resident Evil monsters. House is a large bioorganic weapon created by the C-Virus. This monster was Carla Radame's and Neo Umbrella's ultimate bioweapon, and was so big and important it had to be stored in a massive underwater facility. The plan was to use this terrifying creature to spread the C-Virus across the entire world by erupting and dispersing the virus. House is a gargantuan creature, appearing as a centipede-like cephalopod, with large and small tentacles lining its lower half body. Its origins, however, are unknown due to the presence of a human-like face. It is seen to emerge from a chrysalid, making it a complete mutant. It's resilient to gunfire and most physical injury, however has a weakness to electricity. The creature never made it to completion, however, even at this incomplete form, it proved to be a great threat against seasoned BSAA officers. House was at such a critical stage of metamorphosis that its translucent skin may have been a defect from its incomplete transformation. Its maximum height would be about the same as a 20-story building. House appears to have the ability to change its own mass depending on the situation it finds itself in. If House finds itself in an area too small for its gigantic body, it would transform into a chrysalid and condense itself into a smaller version. House also appears to have the ability to grow rapidly in size when given enough time. House's ability to heal its own wounds and change mass at any given time could make it one of the most resilient bio-organic weapons. A last disturbing fact is, when injured, House's lower half can detach from its upper half and pursue Chris and Piers independently. Lickers have been around since the original Resident Evil game. They have caught many players off guard who become too complacent when dealing with the slower, T-virus infected zombies. Their quadrupedal bone structure makes them crawl on all fours. The Licker also uses its claws to scale vertical structures and ceilings. This allows the creature to use predatory tactics to surprise their prey. These new hunting strategies also showcase its increased primal intellect. The most striking changes that occur between a zombie and a licker is the exposed brain tissue and increase in muscle development, and the total loss of skin. Because of the lack of skin constraint and the developed muscular tissue, the licker is very agile, capable of performing surprising jumps to incredible heights and distances. Its elongated tongue is shown to be enormously powerful, capable of piercing human flesh and often used to decapitate its victims. Lickers have lost the use of their eyes entirely, and cannot track prey by sight. Their developed hearing, however, more than compensates for the loss. Upon detecting potential prey, it will attack full force with teeth, tongue, and claws, often alerting others of its kind in the vicinity as well. Grave diggers were created when an overload of waste transported out of Raccoon City Underground Laboratory led to the P-12A incinerator facility leaking T-virus into the soil. These millipedes mutated to an enormous size. They retain the ability to burrow underground and prefer a subterranean environment, though would surface if hunger overwhelmed their natural instincts. The size they could reach was so vast that it could destroy roads in a manner comparable to an earthquake, as their burrowing left huge, vast, and unsupported tunnels underneath. The gravedigger lay eggs in the ground and sewers, typically in clutches of a hundred. When they hatch, the larvae, known as sliding worms, would transform into new gravediggers themselves after a week. A Chimera is a bioweapon product developed by the Umbrella Corporation and manufactured in the Arclay Laboratory. It is a human-fly hybrid, named after a monster of Greek mythology, itself 
a combination of different animals. The Chimera was produced through genetic manipulation. They were created through in vitro fertilization by artificially inseminating a human ovum with fly DNA, using the T-virus as a bonding agent. The egg would then be placed within a woman to carry it to term. Due to their many flaws, further research into more advanced forms was never conducted, and the Chimera's basic form was never refined to the lengths of the hunter or the tyrant. Despite this, it's still a terrifying sight to behold, especially in number. Aside from their fly-like appearance, the Chimera's most notable characteristics is their ability to walk over ceilings and walls. They use the air ducts to travel from one part of the lad to the other, and attack with their claw-like limbs. When killed, a chemical imbalance in their bodies causes them to dissolve. They cannot fly because of the lack of size of their wings, and they lacked a fully developed exoskeleton. Even though they showed signs of notable resilience, their intelligence was little more than that of an insect. The Iron Maiden are part of Los Illuminados' experimentation in bioweaponry. A number were left to roam the island base during Leon's search for Ashley Graham. Iron Maidens are a variant of the Regenerator, large humanoid creatures well above a normal human's height. They share most physical traits with the Regenerator, but with slight differences. They have a larger mouth that takes up almost their whole face, have a purple hue to their skin, and many large pointed spikes and nails protruding from their bodies. Their name comes from the ancient torturing tool, the Iron Maiden, which was a standing coffin of sorts filled with sharp spikes on the inside which you would lock victims inside. Much like the regenerators, they can be shot several times with no effect and their lost limbs will regrow in a matter of seconds, even the head, and they house several leech-like plagas as well. However, the Iron Maidens lack visible eyes and have a slower walking speed than Regenerators. The Iron Maidens tend to use their spikes as weapons, having a special attack where they grab Leon, pull him towards himself, then extend their spikes, impaling him. They walk in a slow, deliberate manner, constantly suffering from rapid, spastic movements. While dying, the upper torso erratically launches the spikes adorning its body. The U-3 was one of the experimental bioweapons developed by Osmond Sandler's research team on the island in Resident Evil 4. It was a horrifying cross between human, insect and reptile DNA, fused imperfectly into a single being, itself hosting a plaga parasite. The U3 displays the biological features of its genetic benefactors, though imperfections in the technology that created it led it to appear asymmetrical in shape. The upper part of the body is that of a human torso, displaying a hideously warped face, marked by strange scars upon its nape and crown. Its spinal column is also human in appearance. The creature's right arm is clawed, while its left is a long tentacle which is used as a whip against enemies. Its four front and hind legs appeared bonded by a centipede-like fleshy piece of muscle. After its initial defeat in a cage fight against Leon, the creature mutated in order to continue hunting him. The plaga residing in its spine erupted, giving it the ability to kill prey through the new set of jaws the parasite had to offer, being capable of slicing straight through a human being. In its third form, the human-esque head seemed to die, going limp and passive, while the monster used the plaga head more and more exclusively, even using it to dig through the ground and ambush Leon from below. A zombie in the Resident Evil universe refers to most humans that have succumbed to the T-virus, either through contaminated water or via bites and scratches from a virus carrier. However, according to research conducted by Umbrella Corporation, 1 in 10 million hosts exposed to the T-Virus possess the potential to mutate into a tyrant. If the virus is able to find a suitable host, it will dramatically increase their size, strength, speed and agility. 
It will also lead to the massive development or reconfiguration of bone structure, causing large claw-like formations to rise from the host's body. While the T-virus is rather advantageous to the tyrant host, it should be noted that the subjected host will be forced to enjoy an extreme increase in adrenaline, causing the heart to expand and protrude through the chest. Furthermore, most of the original breeds of tyrants were plagued with grotesque facial deformities, as well as an acute decline in intelligence. Many tyrants have been seen to possess a heart on their right side. This is the result of Umbrella's experimentation. In order to support the body to accept parameters, Umbrella researchers grafted more hearts to the body, either taken from larger animals such as rhinoceroses, or cultured in the lab. There is a stage up from this form too called the Super Tyrant. A Super Tyrant is the product of a tyrant bypassing its power limiter, a device developed by Umbrella that prevents a tyrant from experiencing out of control mutations. Usually this only happens when a tyrant suffers significant damage, and results in the tyrant in question gaining more muscle mass, as well as claws. Super tyrants are noticeably more difficult to dispatch than regular tyrants. The super tyrants also lose all orders that they were given, sending them into a berserk-like state. Duvalia is a stage in the life of the Type 3 Plaga, a type 3 plaga is a species of parasitic organism which was genetically engineered by Tricell. Derived from the Spanish plaga parasite, it was developed in an attempt to remove the weaknesses of the plaga type 2s, while also enhancing its strengths. This should be a tell on how refined and perfected the biological manipulation was for the creation of this monster. Its name is derived from the real life Duvalia a species of carrion flower found in the tropic Africa. Its most recognisable feature is a large bulb found inside five shorter appendages, which the plaga mimics with its armoured shell and vulnerable core. Unlike the other plagas who burst from the neck, the Duvalia species destroys its host's entire upper body when it emerges. It appears as a large, flower-like parasite with thick armour on the outside of its body. Its weak points are the fleshy tail that hangs off its back, the remains of the host's upper torso slash ribcage, which is only exposed when the Duvalia is about to attack the player or if shot in the legs repeatedly. Lisa Trevor was a human test subject at the age of 14 who was forced to undergo a plethora of heinous and illegal biological experiments conducted by the Nefarious Umbrella Corporation. The side effects of the experiments mutated Lisa into a monstrous abomination. Lisa's mutations have hideously deformed her physical build. Lisa's hideous face is partially masked by collections of flesh from her victims. During some cutscenes, you may be able to notice one of Lisa's uncanny eyes through a small hole in her mask. Her oversized arms and low posture give her a hunched appearance. She is draped in a tattered hospital gown, with her hands held together by a pair of wooden manacles lined with iron. There is also an eyeball-like tumour visible on her back, a sign of the G-Virus. Numerous tentacles will emerge from her body and undulate violently when she is attacked, a sign of the Nemesis T-type virus. While in various parts of the mansion, you may hear the harrowing wails and cries of Lisa. This characteristic suggests that Lisa is incapable of using a higher level of thought and therefore conforms to a more animalistic nature. However, it should be noted that Lisa was able to start a fire in order to warm herself, as well as write a few crude entries in her journal. She also is able to croak, Mother, when finding her mother's skull. William Birkin was an executive and chief scientist for the Umbrella Corporation. He was the developer responsible for the discovery of the G-Virus and development of the G-Virus project. His involvement in the G-Virus served as a catalyst for the events of the Raccoon City destruction incident. However, he's just a scientist, right? Why is he on the list? 
Well, about that. After being shot, he injected himself with his own G virus, causing him to wildly mutate and become the monster known as G. His first mutation is the closest to resembling William, however a more freakishly muscular form. Due to the development of the G virus, damaged tissue is replaced with a more heavily muscled version. This characteristic of the virus led to a disproportionate right arm and a large tumor-like eyeball to develop within the shoulder. In this form, Birkins goes after the USS team that had assaulted him, implying he still had at least partial cognitive control over his form. In his second form, Birkins' head had been forced down into his chest to be replaced by a new skull. The right hand has sprouted large bone talons and two new arms have begun to develop underneath the originals. In the third form, G has lost all of its outer skin to reveal a more muscular body. Countless spikes and projections emerge from the chest while William Birkin's face has almost utterly faded into the torso. The left arm has also gained talons, though these ones are more like nails rather than ones made of bone on the right side. The second set of arms from the previous form have become fully functional and developed claws. The new head has developed, and another tumor-like eye has developed on G's left leg. In this form, G is far more acrobatic, able to use powerful jumping slashes. The fourth form changes things up. In this mutation, G has become a quadrupedal mutant, utilizing its four primary limbs to move about. The skull and jaw have extended to accommodate the newly formed mouth which is little more than a gaping maw surrounded by spikes, combining with the spikes that used to cover its torso. Despite having a rather bulky body, G is quite agile and quick in this form, and can run, climb walls, and jump all around with little effort. G can also attack by impaling enemies with spikes around its mouth, spitting acidic slime out of its mouth, swiping at enemies with its forearm, and biting at them. And finally, the last form. Without a doubt, G's fifth form is the most twisted out of all the mutations. After experiencing massive physical damage, the creature has mutated into a formless abomination of flesh, spikes, limbs and tentacles. It is able to move only by attaching its largest tentacle to a stationary object and squirming forward with its lesser ones. This mutation is not produced from the evolution like the other forms, instead it is produced by the virus responding to the heavy damage the creature has taken. After mutating into this form, G attacks by swinging its massive tentacle at its prey and hurling wreckage. It also has two highly bizarre attacks, spitting up recently consumed zombies to attack its enemies and ejecting its own mouth to strike at them. I've chosen this as number one as each form on its own is rather unnoteworthy compared to some of the others. However, as a progression, this monster perfectly encapsulates the different creativity that you see in monsters in the Resident Evil games. I hope you enjoyed this week's list and if you did, leave a like. And if you want to see more terrifying creatures, click here for my top 13 scariest Silent Hill monsters. Or if you want to see my previous list, Click here for my top 10 monster tamer games that aren't Pokemon.